Hey, did you know that this is V Lookup Week? This is Crystal. It's been a fun day. Bill Jillen is, who many of you know, as Mr. XL. He has videos, books, the Mr. XL message board, and more. Bill is a great teacher, and I am honored to be in his ranks. I will be showing you an example that calculates distance between coordinates. This is done using VLOOKUP to get latitude and longitude. There is also concatenation, errors, of course, and how to fix them, relative and absolute references, range names, transposing, VBA, table styles, formatting, and conditional formatting. Here is a worksheet created from exporting a table from the reference database that is posted on my website. This data includes latitude and longitude, which came in as text. You can see that immediately, as the values in each cell are aligned on the left. There are also green triangle error indicators in the upper right corner of many of the cells. Here is a floating icon where I can drop down choices of what I want to do about the selection since there is something that Excel perceives as a possible error. I could make my choice here and do each cell individually, but that would take a lot of time. I click on the first latitude value. Hold the shift key while I press right arrow to extend the selection to the next column containing longitude, and then control down arrow to extend the selection to the end of the data which is at row 42,767. Now I drag the scroll box on the vertical scroll bar to go back to the floating indicator. Since I want to do calculations, I select Convert to Number. I notice that different zip codes for the same city have the same coordinates. I could be using let long information from GPS data, which would be more accurate, but I don't have it, and I do have this. Another sheet in this workbook contains information on airports. I am going to use a VLOOKUP formula to get the zip code for a city so I can find coordinates of airports. In this cell, I'm going to put an equation, so I start by typing an equal sign. As I type, IntelliSense prompts me with choices, and there is VLOOKUP. I press tab to choose it. I see the syntax for VLOOKUP, but I like using the dialog box better. I click the FX icon to the left of the formula formula bar, the formula wizard. I am prompted for the VLOOKUP function arguments. What is the value I want to look up? Since the same city name can be in different places, I concatenate state and city so I have a unique lookup value. The table array will come from my zips sheet. I don't have a column with state and city together. I will need to create one before this will work. I know I will make a new column A since the lookup value must be in the leftmost column. I click on cell A2 just to fill it out. Since I am going to be creating another column, I will define the area to go to column G. Shift control down arrow to extend the selection to the end of the data. Hey, I even see values of my array in the wizard dialog box. The next argument is column number. Zip code will be in column 2 after I add a column to the left of it. OK. Of course, the lookup table isn't set up right yet, so currently my formula returns a city instead of a zip code. I go to the zip sheet, right-click on the column header for A, and choose Insert from the shortcut menu. The label will be ST City. In the first row of data, the formula is equal sign D2 space ampersand space C2. Enter. The value looks good, so I will copy it down by double-clicking on the autofill handle in the lower right corner of the cell. The shape of the mouse will be a crosshair, not a plus, on top of the autofill handle. I best fit the column by double-clicking just beyond the right edge of the column header boundary line. I see my zip code has an error indicator. I don't want to lose my leading zeros by converting this data to a number, and it won't be used in mathematical calculations. Text is the correct way to store this information. The error needs to be ignored. I will ignore the error for all my zip codes at once. Shift, Control, Down Arrow. Drag the scroll box to the top of the vertical scroll bar and choose Ignore Error from the floating menu. Not that it is necessary, but I am copying the format of a column label that looks good to the one I just created. 
Freeze the top row. View ribbon, freeze panes, freeze top row. Now I can scroll down, the top row still shows. Back to my VLOOKUP formula. When I copy the formula, I don't want the table array reference to change. I click on a reference in the formula that is currently relative and press the F4 key to toggle it to absolute. This adds dollar signs, which is on the number 4 key on the typewriter keypad. That is how you can remember that it is F4 to toggle it. My lookup value is a concatenation of state and city, D2, ampersand C2, and the column number I want is 2. My table array starts in column A, not column B. I also don't need it to go all the way out to H because zip is in the second column. I will change the last column to B. I press enter. There is the zip code. Double click the autofill handle to copy it down. I see some errors. I would rather if they didn't show. I wrap the lookup in a function called if Error. The first argument is my equation. The second argument is what I want to be displayed if my equation generates an error message instead of a value. I want to show nothing, so I specify a zero length string by typing nothing between the quote marks. Strings are delimited with quotes. I double click the autofill handle to copy the new version of my formula down. Error messages go away. Copy the column labels for latitude and longitude from my zip sheet and paste them here. I copy the equation I just made for zip code as a starting point for a latitude. The lookup value needs to change because it is a relative reference and it just got adjusted when I pasted the formula. State and city is D2 ampersand C2. I enter the formula. Good. <laughs> a number. Once again, I paste an equation to start for longitude. The table array needs to go to column G and the column number is 7. The lookup value needs to be changed to D2 ampersand C2. I select the two cells containing my new formulas and double click the autofill handle to copy them down. Now I filter my records for New York. Uncheck select all the values, scroll to see the value I want, and there it is. I check the box to the left of New York, click OK, and my filter is applied. Now I add a new worksheet for the distances table. I will be creating. Right click on the sheet tab and choose insert from the shortcut menu and specify worksheet. I double click the sheet name to change it from sheet 1 to distances. Now I grab the airport codes, copy and paste. I'm also going to paste the airport codes across the top. I choose paste special, check transpose and click OK. I have code to calculate distances between coordinates in an access database. I ran my code documenter on a database I know that has the code I'm looking for. I filtered the code lines for the word latitude to find my get distance function. I copy the procedure to the clipboard using this handy button. Now I go back to Excel and press Alt F11 to go to the Visual Basic Editor. From the menu, I choose Insert Module and paste my get distance function. Debug, compile, and it looks good. I really should change the module name too, but right now I'm anxious to test it. I copy the function name so I don't have to type it again. The order I will need to specify parameters are latitude and longitude for the first coordinate, then latitude and longitude for the second coordinate. Since I am going to put a formula in this cell, I start with an equal sign. Then I paste the function name. I type an open parenthesis because that always comes next. The first parameter is latitude for the first coordinate. I'm starting with cities listed in row 1. I want help, so I click the FX button to be prompted for information. My lookup value is in cell B1. The table array is on my airport sheet, which has to start with my lookup value column, so I click on the first airport code. Shift click on the first value for longitude, which is the last column, and then shift control down arrow. My column number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I click OK, and there is the first argument for my get distance function. I copy the VLOOKUP equation by selecting it and pressing Control C. Control V to paste for the longitude argument, change the column number to 6. 
click at the end of the line, and Control v to paste again. This time, my lookup value is in a different cell. I select the reference in my equation and click the cell I want to use instead. Now, I press the F4 key to change the reference type. I copy this reference, go to the end, and paste it again. I also adjust my absolute references for my lookup values to be mixed instead of absolute, so that when the formula is copied, only part of the reference will change. I double-click the autofill handle to copy the formulas down. My lookup table needs to be absolute. I'm going to define a range name for my lookup table. I select it by clicking in the top left cell, holding shift while I move around, then click in the name box and type what I want to call it, then enter to complete the definition of my new range name. I replace the references to my lookup table with my range name. I select each reference and press Ctrl V to paste. Now I use the autofill handle to copy my new formula to the cell above and the cells below. I still have a problem with LaGuardia. I go over to the airport sheet and filter the airport code for LGA so I can see what is going on with the data. Uh, well, it's there. Okay, let's take a look at VLOOKUP. There is a fourth argument for VLOOKUP that is optional. This controls what kind of a match will be found. The choices are approximate and exact. I want Want an exact match, so I will say false for finding an approximate one. Same problem with latitude and longitude. I made a range name for my zip code table, which I will use that in the formula when I edit it to say I want an exact match. Copy the formulas down and the numbers look better. I have an error I did not have before with the airport in Binghamton. Oh, I see the problem. No lat long information. And that's because the city shows more than one value, so it's not found in my zip code reference. I see three city values that need to be edited. On my distances sheet, I edit the formula so that the lookup value is a mixed reference. I select all the formulas and use the autofill handle to copy them across. It helps to copy the correct formula down before autofilling across. Beautiful! I click the comma style icon in the number group on the home ribbon and then decrease decimal places twice to show whole numbers. Now I best fit all the columns. They got too skinny. I right click on any selected column header, choose column width from the shortcut menu, and set it to 8 for all those selected. That looks good. I will start coloring my table by choosing a built-in table style. I also check banded columns on the Table Tools Design ribbon. Looking at the table style choices again, I will pick one that shows border lines between each cell. Better, but still not as easy to read as I would like. I make the pale orange color darker for the first row of data. I like that. I will use the Format Painter to copy this color to other rows. If the Format Painter is double-clicked, it stays enabled till it is turned off. Now I will make the column colors different. For this column, I will choose a pale aqua color. In the first row, I want the color to be darker, so I choose more colors from the Paint Bucket icon and drag the shade slider down to make it darker. I will use the Format Painter to copy the medium color to all the rows with medium orange. I am clicking and control clicking on airport codes that aren't next to each other in the white rows. I will also fill them with white. In the Aqua column for the white rows, I will make the shade even lighter. I use the Format Painter again to color the column label and copy the column colors. I right align the column labels since they are over numeric data that is right Aligned. I make column A narrower by dragging its right border to the left in the column heading area. I want to know which airports are closest to each other. I select all my calculated distances and click on Conditional Formatting, which allows me to set up rules for how things will look. I want distances equal to or less than 50 miles to be emphasized. On the first option, Highlight Cells Rules, I see other comparisons, but not the one I'm looking for. I click More Rules at the bottom of the flyout menu. There it is, less than or equal to on the bottom. I choose it and type 50 as the value to compare to. Now the format button. I love all these format choices Excel gives us. If the rule is true, I will show the text in dark red and bold. Okay, I click away from the table to see how it looks. My color was not drastic enough. I click the conditional formatting icon. Since I'm not in a cell with conditional formatting, Excel doesn't know what I want to 
C. I drop the list and choose to show formatting rules for this worksheet. There is the rule I set up, so I click on it to select it. Click the Edit Rule button and change the text color to a brighter red. Perfect! Thanks, Bill, for inviting me to participate in VLOOKUP Week. And thanks for all the great videos you post so others can learn.